Hey ladies, um, it is Monday, July 15th, 2019. I am seven days postpartum. Um, just recorded another video with a general update, but I wanted to separate this video out and talk about the various emotions that come with um, this process, at least for me. And um, some of you may also experience them uh, or you may have in the past also experienced them. And so I just wanted to share um, and talk about that. So, um, you know, I, I, a few days ago, I recorded a video and, and I talked about baby blues. I don't know if it's, if it's just baby blues um, or just a whole bunch of hormones, which I think is what causes baby blues, but it's weird. Like I am not, I'm usually, not to say I'm not sentimental, but I'm definitely not a crier. I'm not weepy. I am sentimental to some extent, but this whole process has made me so much more sentimental. And since giving birth, like not the immediate few days, but like now, um, since I think maybe four days postpartum, I've been way more emotional. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I guess you can blame that on hormones. Um, and some of the things that I've been feeling, I wasn't sure if they were normal or not because you don't know what's normal. And I had shared them with a uh, like colleague slash friend of mine who had had her baby almost a year ago, and we you know we just been texting about it. And I would say things, and she was like, "No, I totally understand." And you know things that I thought maybe I was just being weird or crazy about. So, um, so I just figured I'd get on here and share in case maybe it'll help someone else. And at very least, talking about it usually tends to help me, which is the whole reason I do this. Um, so first thing that I thought was a little odd is that I miss being pregnant. And I don't know if then, and that has nothing to do again with Michaela. Like, you know, I'm so happy she is here. And, you know, like I said, it's like magical that to create this life, but there's the anticipation of when you're pregnant and that build up. And yes, pregnancy. And when I say I miss being pregnant, I don't mean the ail ailments, the symptoms, the pains, the tiredness. I don't mean any of that. <laughs> All of that's for the birds. I don't mean any of that. I meant, and what I mean is just having that baby inside you. And sometimes the kicks, although they could be uncomfortable, but knowing that, although I didn't know she was a female at the time, but knowing that where she was and that she was safe and that she had what she needed and she was always with me, you know, in my, my tummy. And then also knowing, you know, also that anticipation, that buildup of this big event that was getting ready to happen, right? You do all this preparation for your baby, you know, even, even with the, all the stuff your body goes through to prepare you, but also the preparation you go through mentally and, you know, maybe also getting your homes together, just everything. And then, you, you know, you have this labor and delivery and it's all over and it is great, but it's also a little sad to me um, because it's just all over and you have this beautiful baby, but then that's over. And it won't, and that may not make sense to people who haven't had a baby yet and it may not make sense to some people who have had a baby and just didn't feel that way um but that's just kind of how I feel and I'm kind of like that anyway because you know when I was engaged it was you know wedding planning wedding planning wedding planning and then you have this big moment and then it's over so that's the only other thing I can liken it to I don't know if that's exactly the same but that's the only other thing I can compare this to um it's really like I said you have this this so much, and, and this is so much more than a wedding, right? We have this big, big, you know, build up, um, and, and you know, just like I said, emotionally, physically, mentally, and then you're thrust into this whole new change, and it is, it is, you know, so I kind of miss being pregnant, and for the first time, I can understand why some women get pregnant back to back. With that said, I am not doing that. I'm just saying I can understand it before I can understand it. Now I can understand it. <laughs> I don't have any intentions of doing that. I don't know if I ever want to have another kid. I am probably more open to it right now. But that's seven days out. Um, and because of maybe how I'm feeling. So who knows, um, 
you know, later how I, whether I'll still be open to it or not, but, um, you know, my body is still processing all these hormones. Um, so, you know, right now I'm more open to the concept of at least at one market, but, um, but like I said, is, you know, I get why some women want to do it again, almost immediately thereafter. I get it, but that's not really a solution, right? Because, what are you going to do? Constantly stay pregnant? I know some women do or try to, but I, you know, I think it's just learning to love that stage that you're in and then learning to love the next stage. I think that's maybe the way to deal with it. Um, I don't think I did that. I didn't appreciate the pregnancy that much. Um, because I didn't know I would feel like this, <laughs> but for people who are still pregnant, you know, I know it's hard to say when you can't sleep and your body hurts and you, you have pelvic pain and you got to pee and you, you know, you're miserable and it's hot right now. I get it. I totally get it. Um, but I think, you know, appreciating this stage is, you know, important, I, you know, just because it will be over. And even if you do have another kid, it won't be that kid. So you can't get this time back. So that that's something that I'm feeling that I did not expect to feel. Although I did do a lot of um, things during my pregnancy. Like I kept every, every time I had an ultrasound, I had a lot of ultrasounds. I kept every little bracelet they gave me, you know, as a keepsake. I don't know why I need like 39 bracelets or however many I ended up having. But not that many, but I do have probably like, I don't know, well over 10. Um, I don't know why I need that many bracelets, but... Um, you know, I kept every one of them and, and, and things don't make me cry a lot easier. Like I told you guys about all the stuff I had in my hospital bag that I didn't use. And I have the gowns. And when I look at the gown, especially the one I didn't use, which was the pink one with the flowers and the gown or the robe that came with it. And, um, or the little socks that said mama on it, you know, makes, this makes me cry. It makes me want to cry when I look at them. And I'm like, oh my God, it's over. And do I keep these things? Do I not keep these things? Do I sell them? Do I give them away? I mean, you know what I mean. It's just like, what do I do? Um, you know, because I'm attached to them in a weird way. And I didn't even wear them. Um, they're brand new. The tags, I didn't wash them either. <laughs> the tags are just still on them. I don't know. I didn't use them, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then... You know, so it's, it's things that I didn't expect to feel. Um, also, like, even with Michaela the other day, I was holding her and I, I could hear that Regina Bell song playing, If I Could. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but if you aren't, it's a really great song. Um, it was a song I always appreciated, but from a different perspective because I was not a mother. And now that I am a mother and been a mother for seven days, um... You know, I'm like this if I could. Um, and it talks about protecting a baby and your child and from all the, uh, the you know, heartaches and trials that life will, will bring because that's what life does for all of us and how you can't really, you know, you can just help them as much as possible, but you can't really like save them from it. And, um, and yeah, and then that was, you know, it just made me like come ball thinking about the fact that she's going to grow up and I'm going to have to let her go and you know things are going to happen and I don't want anything you know to happen and things are going to happen in her life that may hurt her I mean it happens to all of us right and you know you know it's just so it's like <laughs> you don't want I don't I don't know how to explain it but it's just like, what do I do? And there's nothing I can do except for be there and try to prepare her as much as possible. And she's seven days old. And this wasn't even today. This was like, I mean, I'm all emotional talking about it now. This was like um, two days ago, I think. This was, this was Saturday, I think. And it's just, I'm just, you know, broken up about this and the fact that she'll grow up and she'll leave, you know, she'll she'll live this life and I have to let her go. And I don't know how parents do that. That is crazy. I don't know. How, I don't know how you guys do it. Um, I don't know how my mom did it. I don't know how anyone does this. 
it's just, I mean, it's, and again, I'm so full of hormones, um, but it's just like, oh my God, letting them go, you know, the whole thing is just overwhelming. Um, and then speaking of the word overwhelming, sometimes this process in itself can be overwhelming because, um, you know, you're getting up, you're not getting a lot of sleep, um, and you know, sometimes you don't know what your baby needs because maybe he or she's still hungry or needs to be changed again or, um, you know, just is gassy or colicky or what have you. And is figuring that out, which can be stressful because um, when I first would hear her cry for something, it was like, all you, all I wanted to do was give her, give it to her. And a lot, I'm still like that. I'm trying not to be as much like that because I know it's not as helpful to her to just get it, you know, but she's seven days old, but I would just be like, give it to her. You know, she needs give it to her, give it to her and not to her detriment, but you know, just to, I don't want her to feel any pain or, or negativity. And I know she's not in pain and it's just me trying to take care of her. And I know I have to get past the whole, if she starts crying or screaming, giving her what she wants, but it's hard, especially in the beginning, because you just want them to be okay. So, um, so yeah, so it's like, you just want them to be okay. So I don't, you know, I'm just, I'm not trying to give her everything, but I do sometimes find myself, um, you know, giving in. I think that's more so why we haven't been able to latch too, because I do give in more easily when she doesn't want to latch. I'm trying to be stronger on making her latch, but you know, she starts wanting to eat and I, you know, she becomes impatient and I'm like, okay, fine. You know? Here's the bottle. Um, but there's all that, you know, and it's just a lot of emotions that, like I said, I just didn't expect to feel, um, because who knows, you know, this is not something you can prepare yourself for. Um, but just wanted to share in case someone else feels that way. And I, I will continue to share these emotions throughout the update. You know, I don't know if you call this baby blues, I kind of dubbed it baby blues. Um, I know baby blues comes with anxiety and crying for no reason. And sometimes, yeah, you can do that. I feel like I've had reasons for my crying, um, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not saying they're good reasons, but I've had reasons. Um, I mean, like earlier today, I was um, crying about the fact that I wasn't, I had no idea what I was doing. (laughs) You know, I was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing, you know, am I doing the right things? I want to make sure I'm doing the right things now and not mess it up and find out I should have been doing this after the fact. Cause that's kind of what happened in the hospital. Like, no, like they weren't, it was like later to, it's like, Oh, you should, you can give her, you know, my pedi- her pediatrician was like, okay, go ahead and give her, you know, what she needs. Don't keep it from her. We're in the hospital. I was keeping it from her because they were telling me not to overfeed her and that her stomach is the only size of a marble. So, um, and that made me feel guilty, you know, and then the jaundice made me feel guilty and, you know, everything in the fact that she doesn't latch makes me feel guilty and also makes me feel like a cow. And not only does she not latch, but she started, um, pushing, using her hands to, um, to push me like, you know, bad away. And she t- sometimes does that with the bottle too. Um, when she's, when she just, I don't know, she just, maybe she's just overly angry or just overly hung. I don't know. But sometimes when you're trying to put the bottle in her mouth, she tries to push it away. But and I'm trying to, you know, um, latch her. She'll push me away. And that sometimes makes me feel a little rejected. And I know that's not what she means to do, but it does make me feel like that. So like I said, there's a whole lot of a host of emotions, um, that comes with this that, you know, I didn't know what it would feel like. So I just wanted to share. And if, um, if this is helpful to anybody, or if you felt the same thing, you know, um, you know, let me know is in my, the colleague was telling me, she said, you know, you're not alone. This, this is how a lot of moms feel. And, you know, I didn't know that. Cause again, people don't really talk about any of this stuff. So, um, I just wanted to talk about some of it and it'll go from there. It doesn't change the way I feel about Michaela at all. 
but it is just all these other emotions. And I'm sure as they flush out of my system, it'll feel better, but, or I shouldn't say better, but it'll, you know, maybe I won't be as weepy, but you know, for now, it's kind of like, you know, just lifetime, like a lifetime movie or it's all emotional and, and hormonal. <laughs> anyway, ladies, um, that's it for now, and I will update you again soon.